Johnny, it's definitely an honor to have a chance to speak with you because Honeymoon Suite was such a big part of uh, my back in the day playing music and growing up. Because, of course, I can remember having my 86 uh, Bluebird Camaro, you know, with a oh. T-bar and having the roof off on a summer day and blaring your music out. And, uh, you know, it was just a wonderful time for what you and all the other Canadian 80 bands did because to me in a lot of ways you were part of a group of artists that really helped open up the rest of the world and going wow there's a lot of Canadian talent because when they were so used to the, the greats like Anne Murray and the Guess Who and then suddenly there was this all influx and you were part of that just like what's going now with the Drakes and the Weekend you were part of that world guess what Toronto Canada knows how to rock congratulations oh, and thank you so much for what you what you and your band have done for Canadian music. Wow, that is so um, encouraging. You know that was that was that was great, really. And that, um, that's amazing. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, how, how do I top that? <laughs> no, really, how do I top that? I mean, what do I say at this point? I mean, I, I just got this big smile on my face. That was so uh, that was so nice. It's the truth, though. I mean. You know, well, going, thanks. Thank you. You know, going to your shows when when you know the, the the bands were you know up close that you could see or see them at Ontario Place or all the other great places. You know, the Rock Pile and and um, the Rock you know, being, Pile, Ontario Place. Jeez, <laughs> Ontario Place. So that's the place that went around in circles, right? Like, I mean, exactly. you're on stage and you turn around. Oh, jeez, <laughs> what a guy. Huh. Yeah, you're bringing, you're bringing back a lot of stuff, bud. No, you know, it, it was it was an amazing thing. And then, of course, seeing you guys on uh, City TV's The New Music before Much Music. And, you know, it was just so many great memories. What is it like for you when you think back? Because, again, you were part of an age where music videos were, were, were really coming to its own. Um, and, and like I said, the Canadian band, where people were going, Honeymoon Suite, what are they, British or are they Australian? No, man, they're Canadian, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Um, what do I think about all that sort of sort of stuff? I mean, the video stuff, geez, uh, I have to look at myself way back then, doing all that <laughs> sort of stuff. It's kind of hard. Um, things are way different now. Um, you know, it's, it's like, but you know what? I've stuck to my guns. I mean, I do, we write songs, uh, you know, over the internet, whatnot, face-to-face, uh, like, FaceTime, all that sort of stuff. But I got to get on a plane, and I have to go meet up with Gary, who lives in Illinois right now. Oh well. And oh yeah, and uh, like it ha- I keep everything that has happened way back then stays the same for me. If that makes any sense, I haven't changed much. I mean, um, there's writers and whatnot doing stuff over the internet. It does not work for me. It's a face-to-face sort of thing. So I've I've kept to the same, um, what do you call it? I, you know, the same sort of thing that has worked for us. And uh, now it's worked. We got a, we got a single, you know, that on the radio that's uh, charting. And it's like unheard of for us. I'm going to get to that in a moment. Um, but I still want to talk a little bit about, because, you know, to me, that was the best music, you know, because it was just okay. so innovating. Um, but what was it like for you guys? Basically, again, not just competing, and if I can use that word correctly, competing with other great Canadian bands like the Platinum Blondes and so many others, but also knowing that you're competing with great British bands, great American um, bands, great Australian uh, bands. You know what? It's not a, a competition sort of thing. It's just uh, this is what we do, and um, uh, we just uh, put, you know, make our music and make the best songs we possibly can and uh hopefully you know uh you wish for the best um so yeah, i'm glad that you're saying what you're saying rudy this is killing me um but it's not like a a conscious sort of thing it's like just something that happened if that makes any sense you know it does make a lot of sense but new girl now didn't just happen i mean it was a wow. mega hit, <laughs> and 
it was a, again, 1984, it was a staple point for great music when you had other wow, bands, again, really? like Van Halen and so many other great bands back then. Um, New Girl, now, how did that song originate? And stupid question, but how did that affect you? Okay, first of all, Derry wrote the song, okay? And I first had met Derry. Gary, I picked him up from a rehearsal hall that he was working with another band. He played some of his demos and he started playing this new girl now song. And it's like Dermot, you know, Dermot, that's Gary. Same thing. Um, Gary, I need to sing this song in which I did. And it, it just took off after that. But anyways, um, just to make a long story short, it's so funny that you say that. Like after everything that had gone down, one, one thing that comes to my head is we played with Journey, right? And uh, uh, we're in, I don't know, somewhere in America. And uh, Steve Perry uh, walks into our change room and he goes, who wrote that song? You know, and it's like, it was like, it was so freaking weird. Um, but it was like, crazy it's like this is it's you know whatever whatever anyways uh, the song was recorded we sent it to a radio station um and uh it got airplay and uh it just took off from there i don't know how to make i'm just trying to make the long story short rudy what was it like though america uh, playing american bandstand i mean back then that show was you know saturday Everywhere across North America. <laughs> I mean, Jeez. wow. Uh, it's just for me, it's, it's just uh, it's pressure, you know. It's like just pressure. There's Dick Clark, and uh, this is Dick Clark you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, geez, it's just crazy. It's just, how do you wake up and go do that? I mean, I don't know. Just got to set your mind together, plant your feet, go do the stuff, and uh <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Well, let me jump in then because uh, another question, because I remember that time and especially with the Juno Awards and how cool it was and seeing yourself, Gowan, Brian Adams. Um, oh, wow. Are, like, can I, so can I, can I interject before you even yeah. go on? Yeah. Brian, Brian, like I've known, we've known each other for a long time, not friends, but we've known each other. And uh, Brian had come up to me personally. He says, you're going to do something tonight. And I go, okay. And it's like, I remember that so clearly. And that's uh, Brian Adams. But hey, what a memory. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. But I was going to say, when you're seeing all of these individuals around you and knowing again, well, maybe not knowing, but just the realization that that is the staple point platform for the eighties in great Canadian music. I mean, that, that Juno, the reason I never forget that Juno Awards is because I actually tried to sneak in uh, um, before when I was, when I was younger and I couldn't get in. You're funny. But, <laughs> but seeing the stage and the, the lights and everything else. And it was one of the things that made me in back of my head go, I want to be part of this. And thank God that after all these years, I probably attended, I don't know, 25, Junos uh, wow. across the country. So for you. that actually was something that really, you know, affected me. How did it affect you? Oh, it was like you're, you're being with your friends who recognize you, like musician-wise, and uh, most importantly, fan-wise. I mean, you're recognized for what you're doing, and uh, geez, it's it's an honor. But I got to tell you, uh, I, maybe I shouldn't even say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Now, it wasn't like two weeks ago, maybe even more um, days have gone by just sitting around. Um, Mike Reno gives me a call, right? <laughs> Lover boy. <laughs> yeah, Mike. I've seen him so like so many times. We've done so many shows together, right? But we've never had a really chance uh, to talk. He gives me a call and goes, hey, Johnny, I love what you guys are doing. And it was like, geez, I had to smile like for two days. And it was like... Anyways, back to the Junos. It's like being amongst your, you know, musician friends. 
uh, that are all doing the same thing or trying to do the same thing. But like I said, taking it to another level, what were the, I mean, we're, we're talking really about all the great points that happened during that time. What was the tough part for the band? Because when you reach success, the tough always, part, oh, I can yeah. tell you the tough part. Here we go. Uh, honeymoon suite. Okay. So you're in front of ZZ top. All right. So you're on, you know, uh, and then you're being introduced and it's like, ladies and gentlemen, honeymoon suite. And then it's like, we're in America. Okay. We're nobody. And it's like, okay, people are thinking honeymoon suite, bar mitzvah. Okay. So it takes like four songs <laughs> to get into these people that we are a rock and roll band. And we only got like 40 minutes on stage. So, um, it was some, a lot of difficult sort of stuff, but we did it, you know, and it's, um, we did it with, you know, I don't want to go on with the list of big name bands that we played with, but we did a lot. And, uh, now it's coming back to fruition, I guess. All the work that we've done is, is coming back to us and it's so amazing. Let's get into that right now. You guys have a new hit. It's charting. It's doing great for fans who may not know. What is a new single? How did this all come about? Um, well, Gary and I have always been writing, and so has the band. We met up with a Canadian producer, uh, Mike Crumpus, who lives, who did live in Tennessee, and uh, we went there and we started doing bed tracks. Um, still working as we always did, and uh, we finished all the bed tracks, and uh, then the guy moved to freaking England, and then uh, so we had to follow him. And, uh, geez, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's like five guys and driving in the same car on the same highway. We, everything just fell into place. I just, uh, went to, uh, I just got back from England in March and, uh, I finished this track, find what you're looking for. And, uh, not two weeks ago, uh, get on my computer and it's like, Hey Johnny, your, your, your track is, uh, charting. And it's like, no, it's like, these are the things that you, um, how do I say it? You wish for, but you don't expect. So I don't know. I don't know how to, what more to say. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. I can read your mind, girl. You said it won't be love. Now it's not enough. Where am I in the world? I'm trying. But it's got to be cool because, you know, you have your, your classic fans who are there and loving the fact that you're doing this. But now a completely new generation, as you, as you said earlier, it's a different platform. It's a different way of looking at music and listening to music. And they're catching on to you guys. Yeah, it's like it's like crazy. Think about it. Like uh, we were the most downloaded uh, single last week and number nine and number one is Drake. So go figure. Uh, you know this business is is crazy. I don't understand it. Um, I can only Gary and I and the band can only make the best songs that we can, and uh, we keep going. But wow, this is incredible. What's going on? What's the song about lyrically? Uh, there's no hidden agenda, agenda to the lyric. It's pretty much um, a self journey song. It's uh, wake up. You know, get up off your ass if you got something you know hang on to it if you got something good hang on to it um yeah the lyric speaks for itself there's nothing hidden about it you know and uh you know what in the, in the pre-chorus it's like it could all change yeah you know in a moment you know in a lot of ways you've just shown that rock and roll is alive and well no matter what fashion it is i'm just curious and um what do you think about that statement that Gene Simmons made years ago by saying that rock and roll was dead. That's god awful. Um, rock and roll is dead. I don't know. There has to be something more to to it than that. Uh, that's Gene Simmons, and like we're definitely not in the same category. So I, I don't know if I can really comment on that. But that sounds god awful to me. Rock and roll is dead. Okay, uh, not good to me. Never. Not not at all. When you got so many great Canadian rock bands 
doing their thing, you know. Why would he say herders. that? I'm sorry to interrupt, but why would he say something like that? I I have no idea. In fact, my buddy Brian Vollmer, um, he actually wrote uh, he wrote a song, basically, you know, refuting what Gene Simmons says about rock and roll. Is that you remember the band Helix? He was the yes, of course. I know Brian well. I, I yeah. feel like he's a friend of mine. So, hey. so there you go. So Brian actually, I don't know if you remember or not, he wrote a song to sort of just say, hey, Gene, rock and roll is not dead. You're not paying attention to what's happening. And like well, I said, a lot of great well, bands right now, like I said, Sheep Herders and, and bands like that well, are doing really well. You know what? Uh, for Gene, uh, his, uh, his success, you know, he can say whatever he wants, but that's not cool. I agree. What would be cool though is—is is there an album following this? Like, what's going on? Okay. Um, yeah, they're, all the beds are done. It's just I can't get back to England uh, with our producer uh, without quarantine for 14 days. So yeah. most of the tracks are done, and uh, um, bed tracks are done, but not the vocals. So yes, there's an album to this. <laughs> We've just uh, released uh, two singles, Tell Me What You Want and Find What You're Looking For. And, uh, yeah, I need to, I need for all this COVID stuff to, to blow over and get on a plane and finish. Um, but as for when it's coming out, it's up to the world at this point, right? So I, d I don't know. Well, in, in the meantime, a lot, of, uh, a lot of artists are, of course, doing the virtual performances, uh, is that an option for you guys, or are uh, you doing any of the drive in shows? Okay, you know what? The virtual stuff doesn't cut it for me. Um, I'll do it. I've done it. Uh done a couple tracks. I mean, like, the guys are sending me files of their drums, Dave Betts, uh, keyboards, and all that stuff, and I hear it in my headphones. And uh, it just doesn't cut it. I did it, um, but I don't want to do it. If I have to do it, I'll do it. As for the drive-ins, Oh come on! Like it's been decades, and I've been doing so much. Now I gotta get on stage and sing to a bunch of freaking cars. Oh come on! I I don't know if I can I can do that. Um, I'm gonna hold out, or the band is gonna hold out for a little bit, as, or as long as we can, and hopefully, like I say, this COVID thing will blow over. And once again, like Canada is doing a great job of you know taking care of this thing. So. I don't know. Amen to that. Two more questions, and I'll let you go, sir. One, what's the craziest thing a female fan ever did to meet you guys? What's the craziest what? What's the craziest thing a female fan ever did to meet you guys back in the day? A female I've... fan. Oh, jeez. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. That's a loaded question, Rudy. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> There's times when I'm like get off stage and like there's doors that are locked and how do they get through? It's beyond me. Uh, but the thing is, it's like I want to say hi and it's like if I give them a minute, um, you know, or two and say hey, hi, how you doing? Um, I'll read the next day in Facebook or some sort of junk that hey Johnny was an asshole and it's like you know, jeez Christ, you know. It just got off on stage for like two hours, and here you are, like, banging this freaking door down to say hi, and I'm saying hi, and now you're screwing it up. And anyways, um, yeah, there's many a time that ha that happens, but I'm telling you, at three o'clock in the morning, sometimes like people like to punch their numbers or get into on their computer and say, "What an asshole that guy is." <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you straight up, you and I haven't actually physically met, and that is not. The I'm sorry. Though. Like. You and I have not physically met, and asshole is the last thing I would think of, man. You are amazing, and uh, I'm really enjoying this conversation. In fact, well, thanks. If I could, thanks, Rudy. If, if I could lock you down for like five hours, I would, because there are so many little things that I would love to learn about, because I've, I'm so much about uh, back in the day, and when I hear songs um, like New Girl Now and stuff, and just wanting to know how it was recorded and what was the, you know, um, thought pattern like back then and because of course recording back then is completely different to the recordings uh, today and you know did you know this was going to come in like there's so many questions yeah. but, I, but I, I will ask one more though go and ahead that Rudy. is um, what advice can you give artists today because you guys have dealt with the 
the pinnacle highs and the lows, but you still kept going and proving that with new hits. What advice uh, do you give the artist well, today to handle that? Type well, of I think lifestyle? it's I think it's uh, my advice would be perseverance. Uh, stay true to your guns. Um, at one point, um, they asked me in the '90s. Um, after we were done with Warners or they were done with us, and it was a 10 year, you know, uh, album sort of deal, whatever we fulfilled it, they fulfilled it. But in the nineties, um, music changed for us and it was like for everybody. It was like people singing, uh, listening to the radio and all these singers are getting all pissed off about this and that. And it's like, geez, I was saying to myself, I can't sing like that regardless. Um, uh, we continued on, and we stayed true to our guns. Um, I think that's very important. At one point, uh, somebody was asking me to change the name of the band and uh, go on as someone else to accommodate what was going on in the world at that time. And I said, no, no. I started this in like w- well before 1984, and this is, will continue on. And um, this is what I do, and this is you know how I sing and how I sound and uh, just uh, at the end of the day stay true to your guns uh, stay planted and uh, it'll come if it doesn't come now it'll it will come it definitely will you know I've always said growing up my two favorite years have always been well, three favorite years in music 1972 1976 and 1984 um, wow just to me those three years just amazing music was being released and well, that's you were a, part that's of a, the uh, 1984. Well, thanks, thanks, Rudy. That's a big spread, hey? but hey, that's cool. Um, social media, that's where we go now to follow, uh, folks. Where do we go to follow Honeymoon Suite? Um, well, just punch in Honeymoon Suite. I mean, I do the same thing. Um, just Google it. I mean, <laughs> that's all you do. I just uh, Google and it says, speak now, and then... <laughs> I say I, I tell them I tell Google what I want to hear and what's going on with Honeymoon Suite and bang it, it shows up. So it's so simple for me. I mean I'm so old school, but that's what you do. I'm the same way too. Oh, last last thing, merch. Where do we get Honeymoon merch from? Um, we have actually it's come up on, on my computer. It's uh, there's we got this new merch store going on. So I don't know. That's a different thing that I don't take care of um but it's just a part of google and sort of social media honeymoonsuite.com okay good um, yeah because you don't want to get you don't want to get the uh wrong things over at amazon because you know they can have fake stuff oh, of course i mean but I, I got no control over that rudy you know that i know i know but look man like i said if i could go back to rudy uh you know, 1984, if I can jump into that hot tub time machine and go back and say, hey, <laughs> guess who you're going to be speaking with? I wouldn't believe it for anything. I'd still be trying to sneak into the Junos. So, uh, like That's I said, too funny that you did that. Okay, to- totally cool. I love it. Uh, honor, my friend. Honor. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for the great new music. And, man, I am so looking forward to hopefully one day that we can sit down and have yes. an interview in person. Okay, well, any time that you see us playing around, I mean, you're out of Toronto, correct? Or... Yes, yeah, in Toronto. Yeah. Okay, so any time, let me know. You got my definitely. number. Definitely cool. looking forward to it. Take care. Thank you again, and we'll definitely talk soon. Thank you, Rudy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.